it comes to when we found our creativity, I think the first time we knew that this was for us was when we got our keys to our new classroom. We walked into a blank slate of a classroom and we were just so ready to hit the ground running with decorating a space. And I think that was the first time we like knew our passion with teaching. We love educating children, but we love creating spaces where magic and education happens. I'm L'Oreal and this is Stephanie and we are co-owners of Happily Ever Elementary. So L'Oreal and I have been best friends for well over a decade and I can proudly say that L'Oreal is the reason that I am a teacher. She's a born teacher. So I started teaching two years before Stephanie and before she even got her first teaching gig, she was already bugging me <laughs> about starting a teacher Instagram page. And our personality types are very different. Stephanie is very extroverted. She was in theater, she loves the attention, and I'm more introverted and shy. And it took a little bit of nudging just because um, some people are embarrassed to just talk nonstop to a bunch of people they don't know, some people. Um, but we finally made our Instagram page, Happily Ever Elementary, and I cannot believe where we are today, but it started with just a couple ideas that we were sharing every week, and then it turned into us sharing crafts and projects and content that we were doing with our classrooms. We are very crafty teachers, and we love taking untraditional items in the classroom and making them beautiful. We also like to style and do things on a budget, and I think once we started sharing ideas on our platforms and other teachers gave us recognition, and the coolest thing we saw was teachers recreating our ideas in their classroom. Teachers who needed help with that creative aspect of teaching were turning to us for help and we just felt so inspired by that and giving them free ideas where they can do things on a budget and take items that are just laying around their house and turning them into amazing, beautiful displays in their classroom just gave us so much excitement and we just continued to share those ideas online. We were just going through social media to share our ideas and our love of teaching, our love of children with other educators online. And by using that platform, we actually got to meet a lot of people who over the course of the last five years have become our consumers. We started creating things for ourselves, which then we shared with others and they're willing to purchase that. And all of a sudden we had a business. So a lot of what our followers were looking for was we were doing design and decor in our classroom. We were making over spaces just within our in-house, within our classrooms, and it kind of got the attention of local schools and other schools in our school district, and they would ask to employ us to do the same in their building. So to bring life into it, to create morale, to get the teachers excited about coming into the teacher's lounge. So in that opportunity, we've made over libraries, teacher's lounge, classrooms, um, great rooms, many just areas of schools where kids are at each day and every time we go into a new space with clean walls we just make it seem like Disneyland. We bring in excitement and color and art and it's just been so fun for us to share those ideas on our Instagram page and as we shared more ideas we gained more followers because we were doing easy tutorials for them to follow. We were breaking things down in a way that they've recreated it and we have seen our ideas recreated across Instagram and classrooms worldwide. Last year, L'Oreal taught first grade. I taught kindergarten, but this year, for the first time ever, we are teaching together and we're teaching art. We are so excited because we've always worked at the same schools down the hall, but this year we are sharing the exact same classroom. And so what you're gonna see is us decorating it from start to finish and we cannot wait for you guys to see the reveal. So our business, Happily Ever Elementary, is known for these amazing makeovers that we get to gift to schools and we have such a fun time doing them, but the hardest part is leaving them because all the work that we've put into them, it's just so hard to walk away because we won't get to see the kids' faces when they see them and we won't get to see the comments made and everything that comes from that gift. And this is the first time that we are actually doing a space of our own, which is a shared space, that we get to see the students light up every time they come in for the first time, and they get to acknowledge all the small efforts we put into this space for them. So this makeover, we are starting with a clean blank slate of a classroom, white walls, everything, and we are gonna be turning into an amazing space where kids not only feel creative, but inspired, and hopefully beautiful art will be made every day. So one of the most important things about making over spaces for us is the morale and the excitement that students feel when they're in that space. We personally believe that if you feel in a space that you feel ownership over it, you feel proud of it, you're excited by all the little intricate details that your teacher or whoever put into that space, then you're going to want to be there and you're going to want to be your best. 
And so when it comes to the art room and we're doing art, we want inspiration, we want creativity, we want zeal, we want all of those positive feelings for students to just immediately be overcome with when they step into our classroom. And that starts with what they see, it's the first impression. They walk in, if they see a beautiful space that is covered with these gorgeous materials, whether it's from Michaels or whether we create them using the Michaels materials, then they're gonna wanna do the same thing. They're gonna wanna put paper to, <laughs> paper to pencil <laughs> and they're gonna wanna get started making beautiful art. So first we're going to be making some paper flowers today. Here you can see we have all of the supplies that we've been able to purchase at Michael's. We have our Cricut mats. We have our Cricut maker. Friends, this can make pretty much anything you can think of. We have all of the amazing tools that come and help with the Cricut and then we've got some really nice white cardstock from Michael's as well. So using the Cricut is very simple once you understand the design space and how it works. It basically does the work for you. So on our computer we have opened up the design space by Cricut. We have uploaded our paper flower templates which you can also purchase on our Teachers Pay Teacher store and we're going to be using those templates to make a beautiful paper flower today. So once our design space is open you're just going to size the petals. We're going to be using the full sheet of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and we're going to be cutting our largest petals all the way down to our smallest. We're going to do a three-tiered paper flower today and it's going to be super beautiful when it's done and it's going to complement the whole design and all the flowers we're going to be making today. So step one, we're going to open up our Cricut. Next we're going to be loading up our mat. We're going to put a piece of that white cardstock on the mat. We're going to make sure to start in the corner, line it up because that's where our design in the Cricut design space starts. And then guys, you just have to push the Cricut button and let it rip. All right, so now that it's cut it out so quick, so easy, we're gonna unload our mat. And then the next part is for you to go ahead and peel your petal off. Ah, so easy. And now you have your first petal. You're gonna do this for all the different petals. And next you're gonna see us. is we're making that vertical fold right down the middle, opening it back up, flipping it over, and curling the paper backwards towards the center line. Not putting in a crease, but just making that roll fold right there. Rolling it back, and just like that. You could do a few at a time once you get comfortable, just for more efficiency. But we're gonna do all three layers the exact same way. Now that we've added dimension, we're gonna go ahead and add depth. Now the next step is going to be to use this little cut or slit. You are going to add a little bit of hot glue on one side. So once we've done that and we've glued that together, then we're going to glue it to the back. So let's show you how. All right, here we go. Now on the back of your flower, you are going to go ahead and have six different ones. We like to start from opposite ends and then fill in the blanks. So I'm gonna start on this side. We're just going to hot glue it to the back and lay it nice and flat like that. All of the petals will start to fill in the back and then we'll move inward with each layer. Once we finish the bottom layer, just like this, we're gonna to continue to layer the petals on. Now there's no right or wrong way to make paper flowers. We're gonna be once again making a three tier paper flower, but you can continue on to add layers to add more depth, it's totally up to you. What we recommend is when you start the next layer that you're placing the petal between the two petals on the first layer. So we wanna have that in between look, we don't wanna have them layered on top. So we're just gonna continue with our second layer. Once again, we're gonna do another layer of six, just placing them right in between the bottom layers. So now that we have the three layers glued in, we are gonna go ahead and make the center. There's many different ways to make the center of paper flowers, but this is a really simple way that is tried and true for us. You're gonna take another piece of paper. We're gonna go ahead and fold it long ways. Go ahead and make your crease. We're gonna actually cut this down again. So I'm gonna use that crease as a guideline for cutting. Fold it one more time, long ways. Add your crease. 
And then we're gonna take just a pair of scissors and we're going to cut little slits, but we're not gonna cut all the way through. So we'll stop just before the edge of the paper. I'm cutting on the crease, so it's gonna make these little loops. So we have two of them finished, but you can continue if you want a more full center to your flower, you can do three or four. We're gonna go ahead with the next step. So we're leaving the fold side on top. We're gonna start rolling and gluing. So we're just gonna roll to the center here. And then every so often we can just add a dot of glue just to make sure it all stays together and continue to roll. A couple rolls, add a dot of glue. It doesn't have to be super tight. It can definitely be loose. And there is no right or wrong way to do this. So there, it's gonna make a beautiful center regardless. Just make sure when you finish that you add some glue to secure it here. And then because we're looking for a more, more full center, we're gonna continue to add our next strip. So right where we left off, we're gonna start with a glue dot, placing that here, and continuing on with our next strip where, right where we left off. Once again, a couple rolls, and a dot of glue, until you finish it off. Only a few more steps till we finish off this flower. So now that we've finished the center, you can kind of zhuzh it, fold it out if you'd like, add more layers like L'Oreal had said. But the easiest step and the finishing touch is we're gonna add a nice glob of glue right there in the center, make it generous to make sure that everything stays together. And then we're gonna put in our center. So we're just gonna press firmly right on top of that glue. Again, you can kind of zhuzh and press out your loops that you've cut and glued together. And friends, now you have your beautiful paper flower. So this year we are so excited because we both became the art teachers of our school and we cannot wait, but one of our biggest projects for our new art room is a color wheel. So every art room needs to have a color wheel and on a color wheel you're gonna see a plethora of colors. So we were having so much fun finding all these beautiful supplies that represent all the colors on the color wheel. We're gonna be putting it together as a teaching tool that we will be referring to every day in our art lessons, and we are so excited to put this together for our class. Another project we're gonna be making for the art room is we are gonna be using our Cricut Maker to cut vinyl. Now this was something we did in the early days that really set us apart because way back before crickets and vinyl, teachers cut letters out of paper and put them on their wall. So if you wanted to have a word work board and you wanted to have a catchy title on top, you would cut paper. The problem with paper is it doesn't last very long. It curls, it fades, it shows staples. The beauty with vinyl is it's a sticker, but we are gonna be using vinyl to complement a couple bulletin boards in our classroom, as well as labeling the colors on the color wheel that you'll be seeing. This vinyl is just such an easy way to enhance a project or enhance a space in your classroom and really give it a refined look. this makeover is going to mean the world to our students because everyone is going to benefit from this makeover. Every student will come to our room, every teacher will stop by, and we can't wait for the reveal. Thank you guys so much for coming. This is like a dream come true for L'Oreal and I, and we worked really hard on this room, and we're really excited to share it with kids. Um, and our kids, because we know and love you guys so much. Um, and we just added a whole bunch of decorations and love and we're hoping that you guys enjoy this space as much as we have so far. Okay, all right, so kiddos, if you guys want to come in. All right, friends, welcome to your new art room. Come on in. Come on in, take a look around, what do you guys think?
morning. We hope that you guys are excited. Are you guys excited for school? Yes! Most importantly, are you excited for art class? Yes! So this board is one of our favorite spaces in the art room. We have featured artists that we're so excited to educate the students on. And we got this amazing balsa wood. We added some decals and embellishments and then actually spray painted it to get this antique look. Um, the words artist is just popping on that vinyl that we love and these vintage light bulbs really give it this cafe feel that we were going for. All right, next up we had a big giant white wall that we were eager to cover with a bunch of colors and so what did we do? We grabbed Cricut's vinyl. It was so easy for us to stick on the wall, roll down, and now we have a beautiful art installment for our kids to enjoy. Next up we have this interactive board that we've created. It's three different arches that we've made to have coloring, a spot for student keepsakes, and then an interactive whiteboard as you can see that's gotten its use today. So next up we have our art counter that we're so excited about. This is a place where students can get just some extra work or some extra art when they're finished with their work at their desk. This beautiful hand-painted mural just really embodies our classroom, create to inspire. Um, these paper flowers, we show the demonstration, we paint splatter them, just giving them that edgy art room look. And these beautiful rings here are actually clothespins that are spray painted. Very affordable, but make such a huge impact when it comes to decorating this space. So above our beautiful giant whiteboards, we decided to fill the space with two things poster board and spray paint. And it was so easy to cut and assemble. We were able to quickly spray paint, staple it up onto the wall, and now we have a beautiful display for our students to enjoy. And next we have a teaching tool that the kids love during the reveal. They all gravitate to this space. It's so eye-catching and fun. This is our color wheel that we're gonna be referring to for so many lessons. Gluing them on in color coordinated order just gives us all the feels and we are just so excited about this space. All right, so this last wall in our classroom is super functional. We went ahead and made our own bookshelves just with wood and some staples, and then we were able to use those supplies again that we love, of course, in rainbow order, and we decorated a pegboard that we can't wait to share with our students. The reveal today was pure magic. It was everything we could have asked for and more. We had teachers and their children come in who attend the school. We had community families who lived down the street, walking distance from the school, getting to enter this art room for the first time and seeing the reveal. It truly was a magic. The looks on their faces of pure surprise and awe and wonder. It just brought us so much excitement for the school year. As you know, we've transformed a lot of spaces and we could not believe that we've had the opportunity to take the time to design our own. A lot of this week felt really surreal to us. To see it come together today and to see how the students have reacted has been so fulfilling and we could not be happier. We are looking forward to the most amazing school year, sharing a contract, becoming art teachers for the first time. We have so much to learn and so much to give and we just can't wait to get started. Being a mom is so special to Stephanie and I because we share it. It's the foundation of our friendship. We both have two baby boys at home and I'm pregnant with my third baby and our families are growing and I think it just helps because we both have to continue to have that balance. So we're super excited for this year because not only do we get to share space and share students and all the fun ideas, but we're working part time. So though teaching is amazing, it's been our hobbies, now we have lots of kids between the two of us and we want to start and end days with them um, a little bit more. And so um, our business is going to have some more time at home. And what that means is we get to kind of um, put on some different hats, not just our teacher hat, but basically I think what's next for our business is a lot more creating simply because we'll have more time. So what we would tell makers who are just starting out and feel this lack of confidence and worry that it's just hard business to get into, Stephanie and I are self-taught in everything for business. Teachers, as teachers, we went to college and we are educated, but as business owners, we are 100% self-taught. We will go to YouTube, we will read books, we will listen to podcasts. Information is out there and there is no excuse for things you don't know. Any art form that we don't know how to do, we get on YouTube and we teach ourselves. That is the best thing we can do for ourselves. And I think that's why we made it so far, is we just don't give up. 
And we actually don't like to find a challenge that we don't have an answer to. We will find the answer through research and teamwork and asking the right questions. And I just do feel like when it comes to new creators, just not giving up and understanding that information is out there and you just have to keep persevering and finding that information. So when it comes to finding ideas, we would say that this is a very organic process for us. If you are a business owner or a creator like us, try and keep an open mind because there are ideas or inspiration all around you. Some of the places that we seem to find a lot of uh, our creative juices is when we're shopping, we might see a beautiful dress with tassels that we love and we're like, ooh, could we put that on the end of a banner? That would be cute in a classroom, right? And we kind of just run with it from there. We just kind of, wherever it sparks inspiration, we roll with it and a lot of the times that's where we find our success. So there was this one event that happened for us and it was we made a craft for a particular student in mind for our class and um, it was inspired by this young boy, very energetic and fun so we made a special activity to do with our kids and we thought you know what why don't we post this in our store on Teachers Pay Teachers and we had just started a store so we were kind of going back and forth with putting stuff in there, not really pushing it, um, not putting too much pressure on ourselves. And it took off. And we, I remember for the first time, made a sum of money where we thought, oh my God, we can take this home and it can actually be put back into our families and we can actually do something with this money. It's not just a little bit of extra spending money for craft. It was like enough for us to make a difference financially for our, our households. And that was, I think, for the first time where we looked at each other and were like, let's do this, let's make this our side hustle, let's lean in, let's start our business because I think that was the first time we felt it will actually make a huge difference for us and seeing so many teachers use it in their classrooms, a huge impact for others. So when it comes to selling our products, we use a platform called Teachers Pay Teachers. It is a website where teachers are creating things to sell and serve to other educators. Um, we put items that we put a lot of time and effort into, digital decor, digital items, onto that platform, but we also share a ton of free ideas, helps, tips on our Instagram page where we're helping teachers put those items into action, giving them tips and tricks for decorating, but we serve teachers in many ways, but through Teachers Pay Teachers, it's helped us bring in a second income and support our business. So when it came to starting our business, a lot of people ask, well, how did you do it? It seems like you guys have this one-of-a-kind thing going, and it's not. It is unique because we have a lot to offer and we have a lot of unique ideas. However, the way we got started is simple. We leaned in, we took a leap of faith, and we just tried. And again, like L'Oreal said earlier, we used a lot of free resources that we learned how to use on our own and we made work for us. You guys might be shocked to believe, but a lot of our digital resources come from drawing on an iPad and using PowerPoint. I'm not sure how many of you guys have done that before, but I'm sure it's a lot of you. And if you have those tools and feel confident in using them, you can start a business too. And so we, I think, just figured out how we make that work for us and in turn made it work for other people. And that's where our business started. Now when it comes to our products and once we make them and create them, which Stephanie mentioned, the next step was advertising it and getting people to buy it. And there's this whole aspect of marketing, which we don't have formal education in, but we have learned so much the platforms we use. We are growing and learning with Instagram every day. Instagram makes these shifts with their algorithms and right now they're favoring videos and reels, so we jump on board. We learn how to edit videos, we make cute clips that show our products that people can watch in 15 seconds and they immediately wanna purchase because we make it look easy. We advertise it in a way where we can explain to teachers that this is something you need and want to have in your classroom because we make it look usable. Um, but just creating those shifts and keeping up with the times and the platforms, jumping on things like TikTok and Pinterest, our name is out there on all platforms. And it is for the reason of marketing and getting our products out there. So if you're a teacher that's considering starting a side business or you want to lean into your creative juices and, and make something for yourself, we say do it. It is so beneficial as teachers to have that additional income because we, we know that's kind of our, our job gets a bad rap because we don't make a ton of money. But we totally feel like you can do whatever sets your soul on fire. If that's starting a business with a best friend or opening a shop of your own, go for it. You have nothing to lose. And if it's gonna make your quality of life better, we say it's totally worth it because we have found parts of ourselves that we didn't even know were there through this adventure of Happily Ever Elementary and we cannot imagine life without it. So go for it, take the risk, and don't be scared.